Backwest Magazine is brought to you in part by Hawaii Tourism Authority. Discover the beauty of the islands at GoHawaii.com. We're gearing up for the first ever PacWest Basketball Tournament Championships later this week at Azusa Pacific with stops in Hawaii and California to check out some of the teams vying for the coveted six spots on both the men's and women's sides. We'll also head to Laie to relive the BYU-Hawaii women's volleyball team's march to the Final Four. You're watching another edition of PacWest Magazine here on OC16. The PacWest is comprised of 14 schools in four states making it the largest conference in the West region of NCAA Division II. And the PacWest also has some of the most diverse and talented student-athletes from around the world. Let's see them in action right now. The Notre Dame Denimir men's basketball team collided with Hawaii Pacific at the Blaisdell Arena in a match between two teams with similar grinded-out offensive styles. After a low-scoring first half where the Sea Warriors managed only 17 points, the Argos also meager 23, the gears kicked up a notch and the shot started to fall for both teams. Leading the charge for the home team was big man Marko Kukic. The 6'9 senior from Belgrade, Serbia towered over the visitors and had team highs of 15 points and 10 rebounds. Coming off the bench to offer up 11 points and 7 boards of his own was Jason Jordan. The sophomore guard gave HPU a much needed spark in the second half, erasing a double digit deficit to put the Sea Warriors in position to tie the game in the final seconds. After Simon and Ciso's free throw put the visitors up by three with two ticks left on the clock, HBU had one more chance. Off the inbounds, Max Livingston's launch to an open Kukic was on the money. But Kukic's shot just rimmed out of the buzzer to give the Argos a big road victory on the difficult Hawaii swing. The strenuous trip to the islands is not one many coaches might look forward to, but for NDNU's George Poole, it's a homecoming with added significance. But Pua wasn't the only Hawaii native celebrating a win for the Argos. His 6'6 guard, Micah Denauer, another local boy who prepped just a few miles up the hill from the Blaisdell, racked up an impressive game for the boys in navy blue in front of several family members and friends. Oh, it's great. I feel more comfortable than ever. The weather, everything, I'm just completely comfortable. No, it's awesome. I don't really get to see them too much when I play out in California, so when I get to see them, I really want to just play good for them and play hard. When I first came, I was strictly just shooting threes mostly, and like it was like a three or a layup to the basket. But I'm trying to like I'm trying to get in more in the mid-range game, and I think I can shoot higher percentages there than than out from the three all the time. So I'm trying to just get it develop the inside more. Chipping in 13 points of his own to share the team high with Denauer was senior big man Wesley White. This trip is wonderful, man. You know, it is it is a business trip. Um, but it is, it is easy to get sidetracked being out here in Hawaii, but uh, our coach, he, he does a wonderful job of like keeping our days planned out and having us, you know, like where we day by day, second by second, and just, you know, having us focus for each, each and every game. Wes is a great passer, he's a great low post player, and he always, he's always cleaning up the rebounds, everything. We always try to help him if we can. Because he's always like boxing out one guy, rebounding the other ball, rebounding this, that. So we just try and get in there, help him as much as we can, but just support him the best we can. It's been kind of a tough start. We got a lot of new guys. Um, you know, we're still trying to gel. We're kind of getting it now, but 
Everyone's kind of adjusting. We all know our roles and things are starting to look up for us. While NDNU narrowly missed out on the PacWest Basketball Championship Tournament, HPU used the late second half surge in its final game of the regular season to slide into the number six seed. Both the Argos and Sea Warriors prove why hoops in the PacWest is second to none. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose... I Imagine. Imagine collaborating with a diverse group of people from different backgrounds who all share common values. A place where giving back to the community is not only encouraged, but expected. Where your professor is not just a teacher, but a mentor. Imagine a place where individual leadership is prized. Imagine Chaminade University. school is being built for, for which it's being built, and from this school I'll tell you, from this school will go men and women, will go men and women, whose influence will be felt, whose influence will be felt, for good, for good towards the establishment, towards the establishment, of peace international, of peace, of peace, of peace, of peace international. I chose. I chose. I chose Vision 2. Welcome back to PacWest Magazine right here on OC16. Here's a feature story from Southern California. Point Loma is a beautiful place. The university sits on the cliffs overlooking the Pacific Ocean, and the teams who play games here bask in the glory of the scenic views before and after every contest. But on this gorgeous early January day, it's not only about the scenery, but about PacWest competitive business for two women's basketball teams, the host Sea Lions, who are taking on defending conference champion Grand Canyon. The visitors from Phoenix, Arizona are once again on the prowl for a shot at the conference title. Since the league began playing women's basketball in 2006, only once have the Antelopes come up short in their bid for the championship. This year's Grand Canyon team is led by all-conference guard Malin Smith, number 21, along with a newcomer who has made quite an impact this year, forward Judy Jones, number 23. Between the two of them, they helped GCU jump out to a 26-23 lead by halftime. Despite playing shorthanded, the home team Sea Lions, coached by former NBA assistant Bill Westfall, kept the game close throughout. Callie Rhodes led the way for Point Loma with a barrage of outside shots. Rhodes finished the game with a game-high 17 points. But down the stretch, the visiting Antelopes were able to pull away and win the game by double digits. The final score, Grand Canyon 63, Point Loma 49. Because I wasn't here last year, but I know the history here of being in the Pac West. I know that teams are out to get us, you know. So we have to continue to strive for it and don't be, don't settle to say, oh, okay, because we were that team last year, you know. We have to keep going. We have to keep going and keep pushing because everyone do want to get the spot with that we're at. As the season starting to progress, um, I've kind of looked for my shot a little bit more. Um, at the beginning of the season, I wasn't really looking. Um, we needed to kind of find our identity as a team, and I knew that. Um, I don't need to come out and score 20 points like I did last year. 
I can have 10, and we have a lot of girls who can come and chip in. So I'm not really worried about going out and have big numbers. Just got to do my role, um, and that shirt's going to fall. Don't get me wrong, it's going it's to start falling. We have yet to peak, um, and, and there are some teams that I think that we, that we play against this year that I honestly don't know if they can play any better, and I know that the Lopes can, and uh, we're looking forward to that for that day to happen. Uh, today's uh, Point Loma, they got after us. You know, they didn't, they're a resilient group. They didn't uh, quit. And uh, we, you know, there's always competition we got to face, and so you know we got to remember that that the teams aren't going to fold for us, and so we just got to do our handle our responsibilities to make sure that we you know get them on their heels and keep them there. Despite the loss, Rhodes at Point Loma was very happy with her effort. You know, I think we came into it a little nervous because of their title, and we're just a new team in this division, and. Um, we were real nervous about it, but you know, once we got in there and we were poised and figured out how they were playing, and that you know we're we're just as good as they are, you know, I think I think everything started falling for everyone. Yeah, we probably were a little nervous to start the game and trying to do too much. I told them we need to play with more poise and just run our stuff and give people a chance to get open, and we did. And then we, we made a few shots and, and made a game of it, but then when we start missing uh, and not rebounding, those are the two uh, reasons we could never turn the corner and get the lead. You know, all the teams are really great, and it is a step up from um, from our NAIA league, but um, I think we can hang with them. We hung with them tonight, and I think we can I think we can do some damage in this in this league. It's been interesting. We've been on the road a lot. Uh, now I think it gets better the second half of the season, but uh, we're doing a little travel. I think it's a little step up in competition, uh, in the class, and uh, in, in style of play and everything. And so we're, we're enjoying that and we're feeling our way. Uh, and I think we'll be able to compete quite well uh, in the future. For Grand Canyon, it was an important win. Antelope's head coach, Trent May, knows that the Pac West continues to improve year by year and he wants his team focused on the tough journey all the way to season's end. You know, just our success in the Pac West, and I think it's just one of those things when they play us, they know, hey, uh, that's the best team in the conference, uh, you know, it has been. And so with that, they, they just know that, hey, if they, if they were to get a win, that could make their season. And so I think a lot of teams get up and knowing that the kind of to, uh, you know, to upend us in the championship route has to go through us. And so I think teams really get up to play us. By the end of the regular season, Grand Canyon would have its sights set on the postseason. First, the Pac West Conference Tournament, and then the NCAA Tournament. It's all part of a long basketball journey for one of the Pac West's premier programs. It doesn't look like your average university, because it isn't. Just 12 miles from San Francisco is an urban oasis where students go beyond the classroom, helping businesses become sustainable, fighting breast cancer, athletes who excel and serve the community. And here, you don't just study history, you help make it.
Welcome back to PacWest Magazine. Hey, when we're not on TV on OC16, you can check us out on the web at www.thepacwest.com. That's where you can find PacWest TV. Let's go check it out right now. Hi, this is Wayne Coito, and you're watching PacWest TV at thepacwest.com. Here's a feature story from Commissioner Bob Hope. So the excitement continues here in the Cannon Activity Center, where the regional championships belong to the PacWest. BYU Hawaii, number one seed all the way, wins the regional title of the NCAA West. Great win for us. It was a nice win. We held our composure and, uh, you know, we missed the close down. It's tough to close out in the championship, but we did it. It's still surreal to me. Like, what we were talking before we came out here, we're like, as much as we want to look forward to Florida, we got to focus on tonight. And I shared with the girls my experience back in 06, how I wanted this game so bad, and I'm glad that they wanted it as bad as, bad as I did. And I think if we take our game, that we, how we play tonight, and take it to Florida, I think we can do it. You feel like this is a team of destiny? Yes. I have faith. We'll be we believe in ourselves. And we hope that everyone else believes in us, too. Well, it felt great. I mean, this is my last game, win or lose, on the, in the CAC, so we just put it all out there. And I think we knew we could, we, we knew we could do it, so we just proved it tonight that we deserve to win. Is it also sweet because you beat Cal State San Bernardino, your old nemesis? <laughs> Thank you for reminding that of me. But I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just thinking about, okay, play the situations, look at my, my team, how they're reacting. We got kind of tense, I could tell them, I watched the process, but said, we got to get the volleyball, rhythm, tempo, then the game will come back. We cannot rush it because the adrenaline was flowing in these ladies. I could feel it and sense it. been the secret to the success of the Seasiders this year? You know, it's just accumulation of everything. Our desire to win, we have a lot of depth in the team, we're unified, we're together, so just everything together we just create a really solid, good team. And what does it mean to win a regional championship after, uh, you know, trying for so many years to get back there? Thank you for reminding me. It's great. It's great to win another one, you know, but it's only a step. You know, I did that. Our goal was win the conference, win the regional. Now we got to prepare for nationals. So it's a great opportunity for us, and we'll see what we can do to prepare to do the best we can. Founded in 1868, Holy Names University has grown from humble beginnings on the shores of Lake Merritt to a thriving, comprehensive university in the Oakland Hills overlooking San Francisco Bay. Holy Names is committed to the full development of each student, empowering a diverse student body for leadership and service in a global society. What we do at Holy Names University is to bring together athletics and academics so we can produce scholar athletes in a perfect setting. We prepare student athletes and all our students to be global leaders in a very diverse society. And that's why we think there's a perfect match between Holy Names University and the NCAA. Go Hawks! Using this expression from kinematics, 
With the given interval, plus the integral diverge. And the appropriate substitution would be? What then is the acceleration of the center of mass? Anyone awake? You in the far back. Uh, you back there? You've got to be kidding. Where did you come up with that? You. You? You? Yeah, no. How about you? Mm -hmm. You in the white. God has given certain people the talents and abilities to play sports. For the rest of us, he's given us the ability and the desire to go and cheer them on. My name is Evan Nelson. I am the ringleader for the Blackout student section at APU. APU has a large school feel to it, but at the same time, you can have classes with the players. You can know them. I've loved my experience here. I've thrived. I've grown so much. I would not trade these four years of my life at APU for anything. Wayne Cueto. Stay tuned for more PacWest Magazine. For this segment, we head on campus to Fresno Pacific University and check out our friends at the Sunbird Sports Network. Sunbird's still searching for that magic win number one, taking on visiting Hawaii Hilo and the Amai Sisters. First half, and Jamia McDuffie knocks down the triple to pull the Vulcans up six. Then Sharday Stevens owning the glass, pulls it down and puts it back up. She grabbed nine boards on the night. Sunbird's with the lead now, and Callie Klobeck hits the turnaround off the glass. Then Klobeck one more time down low. She would finish the game with 12 points in transition now. Off the steal by Stevens. She finds Kiara White who lays it up and in. Sunbird's up by six at the break. For the first time, FBU held a lead at half this season. After the intermission, it's more White in transition, this time from Kayla Clement. FPU would lead by as many as eight in the second half, but then the Amai sisters took over. Kirsty Amai here with the jumper to give Hilo a one-point lead, and then after a white free throw, the game was tied, and with just a few ticks left, Cami Amai comes up with the big jumper at the buzzer, and the Amai sisters combined for 30 points. The Sunbirds drop a heartbreaker, 54-52. Really, I just, you know... It's not like we had a new game plan all of a sudden. It was just like, this is going to be the hardest 14-second drill you've ever done, and I mean intensity-wise. Just a lots of awareness, lots of talk, lots of readiness and bounciness. And, uh, you know, Cammy's just a tough player. And um, I honestly was surprised to see it go down. And uh, heartbreak, to say the least. Uh, I usually am pretty hopeful, and I stay pretty positive, and I have a, I have a lot of peace about where we're at as a team, and, and tonight's just one of those nights that uh, hurts. We got to get it. Like, we know what happens second half when we don't work hard, when we don't hustle. We just have to overcome that. And then after they got that last shot off, it just felt really disappointing, really, really disappointing. I was right there with them as far as, gang, this is tough. And, uh, and we're all disappointed. We will review film and see where, what we could have done better, you know, early in the game. I mean, we had a game plan of, of uh, switching really hard on everything. And um, I didn't feel like our switches were hard enough or that we communicated clearly enough. Uh, nonetheless, I didn't, you know, we practiced that one or two times in preparation and, and maybe we didn't practice it enough, you know. So I'll look at that stuff. Um, but overall, it just was really, really hard to see that last bucket drop. Sunbirds looking to stay perfect at home, playing host to their first Hawaii school, the Vulcans from Hilo in town, and no jet lag from the Vulcans here in this track meet. Early on, Matt Samuels running the break, finds Griffin wide open down low for the easy put in. Sunbirds up by four. Then on the other end, it's Paul Batausta with the triple. He finished with eight points on the night. The Sunbirds, they love to play up-tempo basketball. Antonio credit with the outlet to John Taylor for the transition bucket, then Samuels throws it down hard for the jam. He had a team high 25 on the night. Griffin gets a look from deep and nails the three part of his 21 on the night and he was the third leading scorer. More scoring for FPU and Taylor. He'll take all three of those. The step back from deep, Sunbird's up by 13. Then just before the half, Taylor with the body control gets it to go. He had 24, Fresno Pacific 59 points at the break. Second half and on the inbounds, Griffin finds credit who knows what to do at the open lane. He slams it home, he had 12 on the night. Griffin late in the half, takes the contact and gets the bucket. Sunbirds would lead by as many as 30 in the half. Then the icing on the cake, Anthony Brandt from the corner knocks it down. Fresno Pacific goes on to win this one big, 109-88. We did a good job of getting the ball out of the net quick, and um, you know Matt 
you know, racing the ball up the floor and getting us into offense early. Um, you know, I thought he was really good again. You know, really, we just moved the ball well. You know, that's been our focus since the, uh, you know, debacle to Zuzo where we only had five assists. Um, you know, so we've really been trying to move it and, uh, you know, just share the ball more and be more unselfish. I thought our guys did a great job of that tonight. Um, we were just in attack mode and moving the ball. Um, as much as we moved the ball, then we were able to get easy shots and we was able to get easy shots. Just pushing the ball, transition, uh, not being selfish, you know. Uh, just, you know, making plays. We've been working on a new offense and it's kind of clicking for us. So, you know, we're going to stay with that until somebody stops it. And it's very hard to stop. Well, you know, I mean, tonight was a fast paced game. I mean, I think we had 93 possessions. Um, you know, so giving up 88 points off that's almost a point per possession. That's too much. Um, you know, the first half, we didn't want to guard anyone. You know, it was, it was a little disappointing to see given how we, you know, defended Grand Canyon on Saturday. Um, you know, second half was a little better. They th shot, I think, 36% in the second half. But yeah, 43% for the game, that's it's too high. Um, I mean, these guys are gonna enjoy their day off tomorrow and Wednesday, we're gonna get after it defensively because that's, we we're gonna have to defend better than that, uh, you know, to win how we wanna win. At California Baptist University, you'll find the adventurous opportunity of a lifetime to live your purpose. CBU offers an expansive range of undergraduate and graduate academic programs taught by award-winning instructors in state-of-the-art facilities. I can still come back and see my professors and they know me face-to-face. -face. It's an amazing relationship that goes from Cal Baptist onto the future. At CBU, campus life is unparalleled, featuring world-class athletics, fantastic food, lasting friendships, and life-changing ministries. CBU is not just an education, it's an experience. Why don't you join us at CBU? Live your purpose. That's a wrap on this episode of PacWest Magazine, but that doesn't mean you can't catch more highlights and feature stories when we're not on TV. Come find us on the web at thepacwest.com, and you can catch more of this show on PacWest TV, the official channel of the PacWest. For Bob Hogue, this is Wayne Cueto saying thanks for joining us on PacWest Magazine. PacWest Magazine is brought to you in part by Hawaii Tourism Authority. Discover the beauty of the islands at gohawaii.com.